Hey everybody, welcome to this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tuntvid.com. This is going to be more of a general video, video editing tutorial because we're going to talk about three-point editing today. And in fact, we're going to cover one method of four-point editing here in Premiere Pro. I think you're really going to like it. If you like the video and you're looking to support the video, make sure you hit the little like button, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video editing Premiere Pro, possibility of some After Effects stuff coming at some point, tutorials as well. Let's check out this three-point editing. I would have shown you some example stuff, but it's kind of difficult to show you an example of three-point editing because all I'll be showing you is the finished result and that doesn't really show you anything. So the premise behind three-point editing is that you have three points of sort of in-out placement uh, and, and that is what your, your video editing program is going to use to place that clip somewhere on the timeline. So let's check this out. Let's, I'm just going to move my, my playhead all the way to the beginning here of my timeline. I'm going to double click to bring my, my waterfall clip up here to the source, uh, source monitor. And we're going to perform a very, very basic three-point edit. So we're going to hit the spacebar key to begin playing through our jungle waterfall. And let's say, you know what, back here is kind of where we want. So I'm going to use the hotkey I to place an in point. This is where I want the video to begin. And then I continue playing through it, maybe to right about there. And then I hit the letter O, which is going to be an out point. Uh, and then I'm going to use the hotkey period, which is going to take that little portion that I segmented out of the larger clip, just that little in to out point, and drop that on my timeline. You see that? Right? It's about nine seconds of video. Okay, and the overall video is much larger. If I select this video, you can get rid of in out points in the video by hitting Alt in the X key. That'd be Option and the X key on the Mac. If I drag the full clip out into the timeline, you can see just how much longer the full clip is. We definitely only got that little piece. So where were where were the three points? Well, by default, our in point down here on the timeline is down here at the beginning where the playhead is. So we had our in and our out point up here. And then our in point, just by default, is where the playhead was down here in the timeline. So I'm going to just delete that. Let's talk about some other methods of three-point editing. The first of them is going to be placing the in point ourselves. So let's place the in point at 16 seconds. So I'm going to actually zoom my timeline out a little bit. And to get to 16 seconds, I'm going to select the timer here. And I'm just going to type in 1600. And there we go. We're out at 16 seconds. And I'm going to hit the letter I to place my in point. Now we're going to take our jungle clip. And we're going to, I don't know, let's just start at the beginning. And let's do about, I don't know, 10 seconds seconds of jungle. So let's up here on the jungle clip, let's type in a thousand. There's 10 seconds, hit uh, the letter O. There's our inner out point. And now let's hit the letter, uh, the period button on our keyboard. And you can see that it uses that in point as the starting point from the clip. The clip is beginning right at 16 seconds. So where's our three points of editing? Well, three points in, out, and then an in point there on the timeline. Now notice that we have the, this empty 16 seconds leading up to our jungle waterfall shot. We want some sort of video in there. So let's just hit the down arrow key once. That's going to move us right to the 16 second mark. And let's place an out point there by hitting the letter O. Not an in point, but an out point because we want the video we add to sort of backfill this 16 seconds, not begin at this 16 second point. That's where the jungle waterfall begins at 16 seconds. We're going to use the out point to sort of backfill. Let's take our turtle uh, video clip here. Double click to bring that into the source monitor. And let's just place an in point here by hitting the letter I all the way at the beginning. And let's go, let's go like 17 seconds. So we're going to go 1700. That takes us out to here. You know, let's go even a little beyond that, something like that. And I'm going to hit O to place my out point. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting, right? Because, well, you know, actually, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. Let's just go with like, let's go with just 10 seconds of footage. So I'm going to go to the, the 10 second point. I'm going to place my out point there, my in point back here at the beginning. I'm going to hit the minus the minus uh, button just to zoom all the way out so I can see my entire clip timeline there on the source monitor. Let's play at the letter I. So we placed an in point at the very beginning of the clip and out point, uh, what was that, 10 seconds in, right? Now we're going to hit the period button and you can see that it uses that out point and it backfills with our clip. Just that 10 second bit because the where does our clip begin? At 6 seconds. 10 seconds before 16 seconds. I'm going to delete that though. I'm going to go back to the 16 second mark. I'm going to hit the letter O to place an out point again. This time what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to grab and you can see that little icon that appears right? You see that? That just means I can drag that out point. I'm going to drag the out point. I'm going to make it longer than 16 seconds. What if our clip is longer than the space that we have because we have 16 seconds? Let's hit the period button. Well what happens is we get the fit clip uh, window that appears 
And what we can do is we can change the clip speed to, to force it to fill. So we're going to be crushing an 18 second clip down to 16 seconds. Not too bad, but not always what you want to do. You know, if it's spoken word and somebody's conducting an interview, you can't all of a sudden have the voice and the intonation and the pitch all speed up just because you need it to work within 16 seconds. You can ignore the source endpoint, which is going to trim the beginning of the clip that's being added. So we're going to just lose the first two minutes or two seconds and 13 frames of our turtle clip. Maybe not the worst thing in the world. We could ignore the source out, which is going to trim the end of the clip, so we would miss out on the last two seconds of the turtle clip, or we can ignore the sequence out in this case, uh, and what that's going to do is it's actually going to lay the clip over the existing clip, so let's just go with ignore sequence out at this point, and, and just to see what it looks like, so I'm going to hit OK, and you can see that it just basically lays the, the the all the video in on our timeline just like that, and it just crushes it right over the jungle waterfall, and the jungle waterfall is forced to adapt. This might be what you want, especially if the footage at the end of this clip of the turtle swimming away, this is very critical footage to whatever we're shooting. It all just depends on what you want and what you what your needs are in terms of the footage. Let's just undo that. I'm going to hit period again. In this case, I'm going to say, look, ignore the source out because I know that the last bit of that footage is just the turtle swimming away. It's just kind of like it's almost static, the shot, because the turtle is such a small part of the frame at that point, and it doesn't really – it's not contributing what I want. So I'm going to hit OK, and what it's going to have done is it's going to have trimmed off the end part of the turtle, and then it will go right to the jungle waterfall shot. So again, our three points of edit are our in and out over here in the source monitor and our out point here on the timeline. By the way, this is super fast. If you have like a long narrative video, 20 minutes of video up here, and you're just coming through and picking out the little pieces you want and quickly and hitting period, 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 and stacking those video clips up one after the other after the other on your timeline, you can very quickly build out a rough cut of just about anything. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just set the out point here for our turtle clip to the 16 second mark, 1600, and I'm going to hit the letter O, and you can see there's the out point, and now I'm going to hit the period, and it's going to fill in exactly from the very beginning right to our jungle waterfall with 16 seconds of turtle clip footage. That's uh, cool. That's exactly what we want. And just as a quick side note tip, you can use the slip tool here. That's this tool. And you can actually click and drag. So we have all this extra video out here. You can click. We can't really click and drag it anymore to the, to the right because we're beginning at frame zero over here. But let's say we wanted to begin a little further into the video. We can just drag this to the side and now we'll begin a bit further into the video and we'll see a lot more of the turtle swimming away. So once you place your clip like this, you can really fine tune it. And, and what we're seeing up here, by the way, in the larger source monitor is the beginning frame and the ending frame. So you can see at zero seconds, at 16 seconds. And as we shift it, we'll see exactly where the video is going to begin and end. So that can be so helpful when we're going and figuring out exactly like maybe we want the turtle right there, right as the turtle begins to move his head and his little, his little wing arm flap there. And that's exactly where we want to bring the video in. And there we go. We've done it. A, a ton of uh, all kinds of cool stuff you can do when it comes to three-point editing. In fact, I'll go ahead and just redo that. Let's go edit. I'm sorry. I'm going to undo that because I deleted it. I'm going to I'm going to undo that. Let's say we want to add a little clip between these two clips, between the turtle and the jungle waterfall. Well, what we'll do is hit the down arrow key. It's going to take us to the end of that clip. So now the playhead is right there at 16 seconds. Let's load up boats here and let's just grab a three-second chunk. Or let's grab, an, I don't know, five-second chunk of this. Let's just type in 500. 500, boom, and place our out point, and actually let's place our in point there at the beginning. And what we could do here is if we hit period, you're going to see that it's actually going to overwrite the waterfall jungle uh, stuff, and, and we're, we're placing it right there at our endpoint. point. But if I hit the comma key, it's going to just push our waterfall jungle stuff downward. Now, this is still a three-point edit because technically that's our endpoint. point. So I can set the end point by, by hitting the letter I as well down here on the timeline. Use the comma key. Boom. It's going to place. It's going to insert the video and slide everything down the timeline. And this goes for if there are graphics and text and all sorts of stuff stacked up on the other uh, video tracks as well. It's going to push all of that down and keep everything lined up perfectly. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to slide down the timeline a little bit because last but not least, I want to show you a four point edit. What if we set an in at 36 seconds? Let's go 36 and let's set an in I and then we'll also go to like 42 seconds and set an out there. But then also with our video, we have an in and an out. Let's see what happens. We're going to hit period. And you can see what's going to happen is we're going to get that same fit clip option. So I'm actually going to cancel this. Let's pull the out point way out. Let's make it really long. And let's try that again. And what we're going to do is we're going to say change clip to sp change the clip speed. So we're going to force it to fit in there. But we have all these options. We can either trim the beginning or ending of our source or trim the beginning ending here in the sequence. Or, well, it wouldn't really trim. It would just kind of ignore. So if I ignore the source out point or the sequence out point, for instance, all 
all of that video is going to spill right out. It's just going to ignore the out point, right? It's not going to constrain it to be within that. But what I'm trying to show you here is the clip speed thing. I just I get distracted. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Change clip speed here. And by the way, too, you can always use this choice. I don't really recommend checking that on because of all the different uh, all the different options you have in here. You may uh, there, you, there may be times when you want to choose different things. I almost never choose the same thing. But change clips. We're going to hit OK. And you can see here, look at that. Uh, see that little marker, 198.34%. That means that Premiere has taken this clip and sped it up almost to be twice as fast as it was. We can see this is a bit bigger than, than the source monitor. So I'm going to right-click and just scale this to frame size. And if we play through this, you're going to see that it's it's the video, but it's playing at almost double speed because it's 192%. Whereas, you know, everything else, if I right click and go to speed duration, is just at the default 100%. So that's kind of how that works. And what it'll do too, if, if uh, the clip is, if there's not enough video, it'll slow the clip down and stretch it out. That can be really detrimental to your video though if, uh, you know, you'll end up missing a lot of frames. The video won't look smooth anymore. So just keep that in mind before doing anything like that. And yeah, three-point editing. There's so much you can do with it. It's certainly something not to sleep on. It's something that I think is going to speed up your video editing process quite a bit. I know when I first learned about it, uh, well, I was super excited about it first and foremost just because it's so cool to be able to, wow, I can just take a clip and I can segment it out in the source panel. I can stretch my you know in and out points wherever I want and boom, drop it wherever I like in my timeline. So cool, so fast. You know, To be able to insert a clip in between two other clips so easily, use the slip tool and just slide the video back and forth a little bit and get exactly what you need. It just makes editing so much more fun because you're not going in and trimming and cutting. Oh, I screwed that up. I got to stretch it out and it's snapping to everything and it's all over the place. None of that. Three-point editing, it can be very precise. It can be very loosey-goosey. And Premiere will give you those kind of fit options as well if you need to speed up or slow a clip down or just ignore you know, a source in or out point depending on where you're placing the video. If you've enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video in the future for three-point editing. And in, in one case, four-point editing in Premiere Pro, in video editing in general. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.